right lads another day another dollar and the prices only go up let's get back into it shall we apologies again for the screw up last week okay balance of power in eastern Merkaba. what's going on weren't we just about to have a bit of a soap opera moment from last week i think that's right swordland tightens up immigration yeah i think we read that one already okay downtime at home not bad felt like eternity since the Bentfee festival had it really only been less than 24 hours i was at home now drinking an afternoon coffee by the balcony cheers a stack of newspapers lay by my side. I picked them up one by one, reading and rereading articles about the festival. It's not how I choose to spend my weekends, I tell you what. Instead, I uh, choose to spend them playing this game and talking to you jackasses. All right. Some of the newspapers were merciless about Monica for interrupting Kirtan during his speech. A few even called for her to be barred from political matters. Others expressed their support. In any event, I was relieved that the incident hadn't reflected too badly on me true i was putting the last newspaper down as monica joined me on the balcony listen can we talk for a bit of course what is it gotta be supportive for the missus don't you all right monica sat and picked up on the nearest newspaper she pointed to a particularly insulting headline on the front page i never in a million years would have wished for this anton i just wanted to thank you for supporting me and apologize for creating such a spectacle read that needle all i wanted was to bring the people of swordland together the way you're able to but not like this her eyes were getting moist a single tear fell onto the newsprint that's sad one if you're going to succeed in this you have to be stronger i know you can be it's okay everything is under control wipe her tears away i did warn you but you were always stubborn yeah i gotta encourage you right i'm gonna go with number one the rationale being in the political arena what is justified is what you can do when you do it and successfully achieve it so if and this might sound a little cold but if women are capable of achieving political power then it's not right to deny them it vice, vo vice versa is a dicier proposition obviously but nevertheless you know if she's going to go for it she needs to have the strength to be able to win it we never start a battle that we cannot win and that means three to one odds oh anton her eyes filled with gratitude i could see she'd slept as little as i had just since the festival thank you and one more thing you know how stubborn i am yeah that's why i married you perhaps the festival wasn't the proper forum to air my views on women's rights but i still need to do this anton i want to officially adopt this cause as first lady to be able to work on reforms attend meetings rally support among female politicians i know this isn't an urgent issue for you but it's vital to me of course my love i'm looking forward to working closer together oh anton this means so much to me the rationale here being that if i moderate what because i have the power right if i moderate so when she makes a demand and i moderate it and bring it back to the mean then that means that i'm increasing in power in the public eye whilst also achieving the ends that monica needs just more slowly monica hugged me tightly and i felt some of the past day's tension melt away do you ever used to watch friends back in the day you know which one monica is with the hair anyway the noise came from the balcony door. We both turned our heads to see Diana standing there. Mama, I'm hungry. Let's go to the kitchen, baby. We'll make Papa the best snack ever. Hell yeah. I'm hoping for a BLT. They left the balcony and returned half an hour later with a large cookie. Diana had written my name and icing on it. As I sipped my coffee and nibbled the cookie, I thought that I had made the right choice. Things were going to get harder. Well, I would think that no matter what I chose. Things were going to get harder, but at least my life at home was somewhat peaceful yeah that's right more news these scumbags never stop like haven times first lady steps up Bentfy festival is now in full motion ah uh, yeah blah 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 
crowd loved the response from the first lady leaving the mayor embarrassed that's good that reflects positively on us they could have obviously they could have reported it much worse than that fucking lugan presser right okay read the report from lakhaven the Ministry of Statistics, along with the Ministry of Economy and the Central Bank, have delivered a preliminary economic status report. Oh god, what's it going to be? Detailing that the recession is deepening and the financial system is heading towards a potential collapse if we don't take serious action. Minister Hull said the situation was dangerous. How is that possible after everything we've done for the economy? Admittedly, I haven't made every decision in favour of the economy. Where national security comes in, obviously that's become a, uh, the, that's the balancing factor. But come on. Budget allocation of Swordish Armed Forces and something in the capital. Alright, let's deal with this one first. <coughs> Just telling a secret. To determine the current situation of the military and its spending policy, we held a meeting in the White Room. Peter Vulcan and Yosef were seated. General Vulcan and Mr. Lankia, let's start with the briefing. Very well, Mr. President. Oh, another thing, uh, if the economy completely falls in, that undercuts national security. So, obviously, you see that they're dependent on each other, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you get it. I don't need to explain that shit to you guys. You're sophisticated strategist by now, I'm sure. We have prepared a briefing to convey further details about the current situation of our military. Which branch would you like to know about? Um, what's the situation of our army? Yeah, let's do them in order of priority. According to the latest reports from Camp Strongarm, currently we field three armies totaling up to approximately 400,000 active troops. Fantastic, which is a good amount. The real issue we're having is the quality, not the quantity. Mm -hmm. What's the current equipment status? Where exactly our army is deployed at right now? The first army is stationed at the Lesbia and Valen borders to protect the way into the central regions of Sordland. Well, that's fucking pointless. Mm. It's a, why would they do that? The second army, our strongest force, has been situated by the Rumberg border. Excellent, completely support that decision. The second army has a large mountain commando force and it is the best equipped army because they are facing Rumberg. Obviously, that's exactly right. The third army near the Agnolian border and coastal areas facing Valgsland. So that means they're also in the north. So if Ramsburg invades, they can pivot to take advantage of. Uh, because when Ramsburg invades, obviously they're going to need a uh, no, phalanx. What's the word I'm looking for? They're going to want to concentrate their forces in order to be able to push through wherever we're defending. And wherever that is, our third army can take advantage of the fact that they've weakened other areas in order to enforce the central one and move around them. Due to our bitter past, we generally keep a coastal defence force, although many years ago the decimation of our fleet still is not forgotten. Yeah, and we're not going to rebuild it. Okay, how do we compare to other armies? Rumberg fields about six armies, amounting to a million soldiers. Lesbia fields five armies, which amount to 800,000 soldiers. Valgsland field one army of 100,000 soldiers. All right, so working in reverse order. Valgsland, we don't have to worry about their army. It's tiny, and anyway, they're a naval force. So even like with that few soldiers, it would be pointless for them to try and mount an amphibious landing, even though they could do it with the strength of their navy. Because as soon as their soldiers got on land, we just make mincemeat out of them anyway. Alright, Lesbia fields five armies, which amount to 800,000 soldiers. Fine, but we want them to be a diplomatic ally, so we're only going to have a skeleton force on that southern border. And Rumberg fields six armies, amounting to a million soldiers. So that means, how many do we have? They are stronger than us by a factor of 2.5. Strategically speaking, we don't attack until we have a 3 to 1 advantage, so that leaves us a 0.5 uh, overhead. Nevertheless, in matters of desperation, they still might attack, especially if they see weakness. But primarily a war between ATO and the CSP, or whatever it's called, the communist one, um, International Alliance, is the, um, is the real issue. So. Uh, we can't rely on that 0.5 overhead because some other factor in some other part on that some other part of the map that we can't see might kick off, causing an ATO versus CSP war, and then they will invade us. You know, whatever the um, 
whatever the actual new miracles are. So we, in order to achieve a balance of power, we want to match their manpower and match their technology. Um, and theoretically, really what we want is overmatch so that we can start to take land off them rather than the other way around. All right. Uh, Valen filled an army amounting to 100,000 soldiers and Agnolia filled two armies with a total of 200,000 soldiers. It's extremely unlikely that Agnolia invades us, so that's not a concern. And Valen only has 100,000 soldiers, so they won't under any circumstances. The sheer size of Romsburg's army is because of their forced conscription laws. Due to their massive gold reserves, reserves they are able to afford it. Hmm... Forced conscription. Does that mean I can assume that their forces are poorly trained and poorly equipped? Because I'm assuming that all of that money is just going to go into salaries. On the other hand, the Lesbian Army is the most advanced followed by the Valgslandian Army. Both of these countries put lots of money modernizing their military. Alright, and what's the equipment status? Our army is quite outdated by today's military standards. Most of our equipment is two decades old. To make up for our lack of modern military equipment, we resort to large numbers of soldiers, which is not really a long-term solution. I've been trying hard to reduce the effects of this problem. It is very problematic. Yeah, you're telling me. We need more funding towards modernization. Otherwise, our army will be seen as weak. Well, we've already spent that money. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Let's talk about our navy. Navy currently cons constitutes 59 ships with a total of 60,000 sailors and support staff. As you know, these ships are commanded from our main naval base in Korea, where our flagship SN Renan is docked. How does this navy compare to the others? Dwarfed by the Valslandian navy, which has 194 ships, and the Agnolian navy has 81 ships. Well, I'm extremely surprised if those are the numbers. Let this motorbike go by. Extremely surprised that the Valgslandian navy has any. Um, sorry, I'm extremely surprised that the Agnolian navy is at all interested in having a bit of buffo with the Valgslandian navy. If those are the metrics, I would be inclined to just give them the island and step back and pull back to a land force. But you know, you know how I feel about that. We have to pick one or the other. We only surpass Lesbia in terms of our navy, navy as they have less than thirty ships. As you see, the situation is dire, but the solution is not just more ships. To make a truly better navy, we need to equip our ships with modern radar and sonar systems. More outdated ships wouldn't mean much. Uh, what it sees to our navy patrol, the Markian, Greystrait, and Antikian Sea. Our navy protects all our coastal regions. To make sure we are not thing our defence, our priori we prioritise certain... <coughs> To make sure we are not thinning out our defence, we prioritise certain regions over others like Greater Holsword. Fine. We often patrol the routes that are close to the shipping lanes, especially Markian Sea and Grey Strait. The amount of cargo that goes through that area is eye-opening. Yeah, fair enough. Another thing to note is, after the takeover of Helgeland, where our navy has led incursion operations to protect Agnolia, we also take part in some joint navy drills as well. Okay, good. Um, and what's the final one is the Air Force. Air Force is the lowest priority only because I assume that we have bugger all Air Force. Um, strictly speaking, if we had an Air Force, it would be more important than the Navy. But yeah. Our Air Force currently has 410 planes in the invent inventory, out of which only 140 are jet planes that are not in great condition. Hmm... Not great, is it? 30,000 pilots and support staff work in the Air Force. Oh, those should be split into separate columns. You can't group pilots and support staff. They can't do each other's jobs. Uh, work in the Air Force, and they're commanded by the Mark Air Force Base in Erlery. Whereabouts is Erlery? Avery, Laren, Linkburg, Estord, Nabel. Uzerin, Erzerin, Ribblesana, Adair, Golser, Lakehaven, Ribbery, Enrique, Erlery. Okay. Can they fly the 
Uh, what's the metric on the map? 100 kilometers, that's right. Can they fly the 100? 250 kilometers to the front to do ground attack and then return. Depends on the technology of the time. We have jets. They can probably do that. More important though is having fighters. We can't allow uh, Ramberg to perform aerial bombardments of Lacayan and Dyer. So, and we have airports here, so presumably we can station as many fighters as possible in Dyer and Lacayan, and then use Ullery as the supply base to keep them going, and then we'll use those fighters to shoot down as many bombers as we can and perform dogfights. If we get air superiority, extremely unlikely, then we'll use that to dominate their ground forces. Uh, and if they invade, they will use their air force to support the invasion first, uh, and then only once the sieges begin. But nevertheless, um, we should still prioritize fighters under both scenarios, so fighters are the way to go for us. All right, what are our operational capabilities? Our planes can bomb targets within a 400 kilometer radius of their airfield. I'm assuming that's 400 away and 400 back with no problem. They have medium range and semi-effective nighttime bombing capabilities. All right, that's good. Nighttime bombing is much more difficult to intercept with the uh, fighters, assuming we're still in the range of optical contact. Medium range is fine. We don't need long range bombers at this point. Although we do want to be able to hold the enemy's capital and major industrial centers at threat, but I don't think we're going to be able to achieve that anytime soon. It's expensive. If we had the money to be able to do that, I would just pour it into the army instead. At any time, we can field seven air wings composing a total of 130 aircraft that can operate in combat duty. That is enough to subdue most targets. That's pretty amazing. Assuming we've got enough um, fighters to be able to uh, provide... Uh, you know, flight assistance duties or whatever they call it, so that our ground attack forces can counter an invasionary force that will increase the effectiveness of our step back strategy that we're going to pursue. So that is quite good, assuming that the enemy Ramberg uh, forces don't massively overmatch us in terms of capability or numbers in terms of the air force, and I am not willing to make that assumption just yet. In terms of our bombing capability, we have an average of 100 meters of precision. This is not great, but it's still within the effective radius of the bombs. That's fine because they have to group their forces in order to push. All right, this is just a straight. Those of you who do a military history will know this. This is, it will be old news, but for those of you who don't, it's just a straight question of concentration of ver forces versus saturation of fire, right? So if they want to push through our um, through our army, they need to concentrate their forces. If they concentrate our forces, then we don't need a huge amount of uh, their forces, then they don't need it. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ, Peter, you're drunk. Sort yourself out. They have to concentrate their forces in order to break through our army line. If they concentrate their forces, then we don't need great precision for our saturation bombing campaigns in order to cause enough of an attrition that our army guys have a chance to hold them off, um, increase, increasing the chances of imposing disproportionate losses, then retreat and do the same thing over again. How experienced are our pilots? Our pilots have average experience. Great, so they have a total of 450 hours flight time with the craft before they're qualified. This gives them more than enough time to get used to it. That's great. What's their experience with uh, attack runs? This is low compared to 1,000 to 1,500 hours in other countries like Arcasia, United Contana, Lesbia, and even Valgsland. What about Rumsburg? Normally the hours per pilot should be higher, but due to lack of funding we can't increase the training times. Fuel costs are rather high. Not to be callous, but uh, this will be attrition warfare if it turns into dogfights, if it's fighter versus fighter, right? So those who have the skills will survive and become better and become then become great. Those that don't will be quickly wiped out uh, come the war. Um... 
How does our Air Force work together with other military branches? The Air Force is trained as an independent tactical support branch, which means it assists other branches but doesn't collaborate. That's a real shame. I would, yeah, not just a shame. That's awful. That's there we. That's oh my god. I can't overstate how bad that is. That's terrible. We need to have the Army and the Air Force integrated so that forces on the ground can call in attack runs directly without having to branch up through command to the level at which uh, communication occurs with the Air Force and then send it all the way back down again. It's extremely inefficient. And we have radios, I'm assuming, given the age and the level of technology. So really, we want to push responsibility uh, to the lowest level which it's viable. So we want uh, men on the front line who are radio operators and that kind of thing being able to report to the Air Force where support is needed or at the very least be able to go one up the chain and then report to the Air Force uh, where the support is needed. We really need a, an integrated, uh, uh, integrated ground attack team. What used to be called Air Land Battle Doctrine. This does cause some issues like friendly fire and missed close to air support opportunities, absolutely. There are ways to improve collaboration with joint operation rooms, something to think about surely. Yeah, you're telling me. I would like to know about the other branches, any specific ones you want to know about? Alright, that does the whole lot, actually let's move on. He cleared his throat. Thank you for keeping your promises, know that I won't ever forget your great deed. Yeah. Better fucking not. Hopefully the allocated money helps our defence needs. Alright. Oh, we are getting juicy in the strategic considerations now, lads. Look at this. The increase of the military budget is for national security, which was threatened by Rumberg and other nations. Correct. The military is a top priority for our administration and the Swordish people who hold it in high esteem. Correct. It is a pleasure to work with you, Yosef and Valken. You are true sons of Swordland who have served and continue to serve well. Correct. The important thing is we put these funds to good use as the people will need proof of our success in the military. Also correct. Secretary, you want to roll a d4 for me, please? Four. All right. We surely will. All spending topics will be addressed so the people can be proud of something that is theirs. Oh. He's got me feeling patriotic, lads. I have some suggestions already. I'm sure that people will approve something new and bold from us. Should we move on to the spending choice? Sure, I want to hear the suggestions. The increase of the military budget leaves us with big questions about how to utilise it. There was a lot of debate at the Ministry which resulted in two factions of thought. The first faction is in favour of enlarging the armed forces by enlisting more men. No, that's not where we need to focus our... I mean, obviously we'll want more men, but the most efficient option is not an increase in size at the moment. While the second faction is in favour of purchasing better military equipment instead. What's the argument for increasing the size? Some of our neighbours have larger populations and thus a larger armed force, that's true. Using funds to boost our size would minimise their advantage. Yes, that's correct. Theoretically, numbers alone don't determine the strength balance. Yeah. There's an old saying, quantity has a quality all of its own. Right. So put that into any quantity versus quality calculation that you're doing in your head right now. Enlisting more soldiers to the armed forces could also minimise the unemployment issue. Ah... Yes, yes, that's true. Hmm, a vast armed forces is my preference, quantity over quality in this case. The Swordish armed forces are already large enough, I don't think quantity should be our focus. We cannot beat an overwhelmingly large army like Rumberg without numbers. What's the argument for purchasing better equipment? The armed forces are behind in terms of military equipment in comparison to our neighbours. We need a fundamental modernisation programme. No matter how many advanced weapons and systems we buy, our enemies can overcome them. Hmm. Falcon had a serious tone. That sounds bleak. Quality over quantity, always. A smaller, well-equipped force can destroy a much larger one. Sir, I will be frank, Rumberg fields three times our force. A modernization program won't mitigate our difference. The era of the era of large assaults and human wave tactics are over. We're heading to an era of modern combat which requires modern tools to adapt. 
I have settled on a decision. I haven't. The generals were waiting for the word. I hope the decision is in the interest of all. This is a tough one, lads. This is a tough one. <sighs> Pardon me. All right, there's some factors that I'm not, uh, that I don't have the information for, which make this more difficult. Where do we source the uh, extra material that we'll be buying? Right. If we do a modernization program where we get all of the equipment and material, if the material is domestically produced, that would be really good because then the arms industry will hire more people in order to match it and therefore we don't need to intervene in the free market in that sense. It wouldn't really be free, but you get what I mean, right? The flow on effects would be an employment advantage. So I don't know the answer to that question, so we're going to have to guess on that one. Also, in terms of military effectiveness, is the age of mass assault actually over? Not really. Because an invasion from Rumberg... Well, actually, let me think about this. I have been assuming that the invasion from Rumberg would be a mass assault. Is it possible that their forces will be so modernized that they can pursue an assault on us purely through special forces and air support? Seems unlikely, right? I think I'm going to guess that in a Rumberg versus Swordland war, it will be a total war, and massed assaults will still be a part of uh, the way that the war unfolds. Therefore, and because I don't know where we're going to source our equipment from, because I don't know what the state of our current arms industry is, let me have a look at the country and overview and let me see if there's anything here. Outdated military equipment, security jurisdiction, military interference in politics, economy, weak transportation, unemployment, tax evasion, decreased trade volume, economy plummeting, Lauren Rust Belt, Argonaut lacks investment, monetary in action, stagnated, consistent economy. Hmm. No clues there. All right. Given the uncertainty, I am going to expand the armed forces numerically rather than in terms of quality. That is unfortunate, but as you command, Mr. President, thank you for the right choice. The expansion will begin right away. Um, hmm. I was going to say once the economy starts getting better, then we can expand the quality of our armed forces, but things look like they're just getting worse and worse. That will be all for today then. All right, good work everyone. I'd like to extend my thanks for your attendance. The meeting concluded as the sun set over the concrete jungle that was whole sword. Tough decisions. However, we must always face up to what the decisions actually are. Now what was that message that popped up here? Something was updated, right? Uh, increase the size of the military was made, yes. Something changed here. Same message, okay, that's fine. What's going on in the news? Major military expansion, correct. Second Contanan satellite in space. Don't like that. What's going on here? Young Swords militants arrested. That's good because the security forces are doing their job. Education reforms. Slower than expected. Reduction of hours taught in citizenship, solism, and nationals, nationalism subjects. I don't mind a reduction in solism, that's fine. 
citizenship lessons, or if I had my way, wouldn't be reduced, and nationalism similarly wouldn't be reduced because that's going to be an important ideological factor come the invasion. And what else have we got? L1 nears completion. That is fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing the economic benefits of that one. I tell you what, I am feeling squeezed, lads. Feeling squeezed. Discussion on the formation of a new police force. Okay, interesting. I've already given them a small budget increase. Carl Greiser arrived for a meeting to discuss the new police force. After Livia informed us of his arrival, Lucian opened the door and let him in. Hello, Mr. President, Mr. Gallardo. What a sunny day, isn't it? The weather outside was beautiful indeed. Clear sky and sunshine made the scenery look lively. Well, I don't know about you guys, but it's stinking hot where I am. One could even hear the ground, sounds of birds chirping from the palace garden. Good to see you, Carl. How have you been? It's been going okay. We've tackled many security issues, but there are still some to go through. More importantly, the security situation in the country is much more stable, allowing people to return to a normal life. Fantastic. Please have a seat. We don't want you to feel uncomfortable. I'm used to the uncomfortable. <laughs> He took a seat and corrected his glasses. We have been informed of the establishment of the community police under the Ministry of the Interior. Yes, Minister Graf has, been given, has given me full authority to lead the new force in order to combat organised crime, drug trade and trafficking in our poorer cities and their neighbourhoods. Their role is of a supportive nature. I have many of my trusted officers scout hundreds of loyal community volunteers and train them in the police academies around the country. The Coronelli and Skinner have a presence in many of their districts. Is that a crime family? Yes it is. Their primary focus is illegal drug and organ trafficking. Okay, we need to protect and keep the organ the community. <coughs> One, we need to protect and keep our communities safe. This is another step towards that, correct. If communities, especially of ethnic descent, gain more responsibility in their own security, it could backfire. Mm, yeah, but also it could be efficient spending in terms of the total enforcement that is done. The crime families need to be taken down. We can't let them do what they want with impunity. How did we ever come to this low point? Number one it is. The enhanced local security and cooperation these new local forces provide will help us improve the dangerous situation in these neighbourhoods. Our current efforts have been successful at containing these gangs. This force will ensure the reduction of crime in our neighbourhoods. The Nargis, Argenland and Bergia regions are suffering from most of the crime issues. Out of all, Estord seems to be the hot spot. Hmm. Lilius Graf has a good security history. You will handle them with her. Of course, sir. We are working in close collaboration with Mrs. Graf. Things are much better already. The community police is the very local enforcement driven. The community police is very local enforcement driven and will aid us in the internal security efforts. I also wanted to point out that hundreds of Agno Sordish, uh, Bludish, and Sordish volunteers are now entering training. Soon they will assist our forces. Excellent. We are ensuring that people take charge of their own districts. By giving them responsibility and oversight, we will have them as our allies on the ground. Make sure the force is very diverse and represents the neighbourhood. Make sure to pick the right people for the job and have solid background checks. Don't arm the community police. We shouldn't trust them yet. I'm going to go for number two. So long as their backgrounds are good, I'm happy. I have personally picked the initial recruits. My officers are evaluating all of them with thorough checks. You should receive further reports on our progress and actions in the upcoming months, President Rain. I am very glad you have taken such a step, Mr. President. Well, I will continue my work if there is nothing else. Thank you for your time, Carl. It's a privilege to work with you, President Rain. Good day. That's right. Hmm, very good. And what's in the news? New community police department set to debut. Well, hopefully that works out. Right, do we have any others? Aha, a diplomatic communique from the Republic of Phelan. Let's see what the Valax have to say for themselves. Trade talks with the president of Valen. All right. Oh, this is going to be heavy duty, lads. 
Swordland 1's flight from Holsword to Raklevitz took approximately five hours. Despite heavy turbulence, I managed to sleep a little. Alright, I've got a visitor, so I'll have to talk to you later for this one.